In a previous video, we showed you how to use the LED effects library with Clipper to add color and motion animation to your data controlled LEDs in your printer. This was ported to the Clipper environment by Julian Schill, who recently reached out and let us know that there's now a simulator so that you can try the effects out on your computer before committing them to the firmware of your Clipper machine. It's a really useful tool, so I thought I'd take a second to show you how to get it and how to use it. First, go to Julian's repo on GitHub and go to the releases link. And you go down to the assets area and you can see that the simulator is available for Mac OS and Windows. Download the appropriate version. And the first time you run it, you're probably going to get a security warning from your operating system. If you are on Windows, you just click through the dialog to add an exception to Windows Defender. On the Macintosh, it's a little more involved, but it's not too bad. So the first time you launch the simulator, you're going to get this warning that Apple cannot check it for malicious software. That doesn't mean this is malicious, it just means that this is not a registered piece of software, so hit OK. Next, we go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and you can see there's this warning here. Just click the lock to authenticate and say Open Anyway. And now that we have convinced the system to do what we want it to do, we will get the effects simulator. Let me just turn this off so it's not distracting. This black area at the top is where the simulation is shown. Here in this row, we set up what the simulation will look like. So you can set the number of LEDs, the shape that they're in, whether it's a circle or a square size. There's a number of layouts that are available, rectangle, circle, triangle, and the Voron logo for the Stealth Burner rainbow LED. The number of lines that are in your simulation, which I'll show you in a moment, and the distance in between. So if I turn this back on, we've got our 32 LEDs. We can make them square if that's easier for you to visualize. You can make them larger or smaller. We have our rectangle, circle, triangle. Now with the Voron logo, if you're simulating the rainbow LED, you would put in eight LEDs because that's the number that are actually in that board. And we can space them apart a little bit. Another option is if you're using Timmet's LED panels for the Voron V0, we can go over, I believe that's nine LEDs in a rectangle, but we'll say three lines. So you can easily configure this to do different types of displays. This row simulates some of the external inputs that can be used with the effects. So we have stepper position, heater temperature, progress, and analog for if you're controlling the effect via an analog input on your controller. Here we have the layers of the effect because you can have multiple layers, multiple effects running at the same time. This is a GUI to change these values. And down here we have an input output field. So we can see that this output is the same as what we have here. And if I change this to something different, this updates. This is useful in two ways. You can paste a value in, which I'm going to show you how to do uh, if you want to tweak an existing effect. Or once you've built an effect in the GUI, you can copy from that field and then use that in your configuration. And to show you what that would look like, I'm going to jump over, I have the backup of my Clipper installation and one of the effects that I use is the Comet effect when I'm running a bed mesh. So I'm just going to copy that. Now if you go here, paste that in, just clean up that formatting and hit the load button, that's now going to run that effect in whatever configuration you've run up here. So the, the simulator display doesn't follow this. But 
it's easy enough. I know this is for my stealth burner. So I can go here, Voron logo, and now we've got that running. So let's say I wanted to change the colors involved with this effect. We can see our color palette here. Once you click on the layer, then you can see the GUI to change those values comes up and we'll go to the first color and we can see that. So if we wanted to change this color, let's say to blue, we can just drag the color picker and then when we close it, that updates. One of the other uses of this area at the bottom is you can see all of the values here and let's say I really wanted this value to be 0.25. I can just go in, I can text edit within this area, and again, just hit load, it immediately refreshes. And you can see if we change the effect rate, you can also type into these areas. This is a good reminder that you have to have the layer highlighted here, and then you can change your values, and they will update here, and again, Let's say I make this three. That's automatically updated here. And if I wanted to put this effect into my configuration, you would just select and copy and paste it into your config file. And there you have it, a simple tool to make it easier to program informative and entertaining LED effects into your printer. I know I run a number of different effects in different colors so that at a glance I can tell what stage of printing my printer is in. Thanks to Julian Schill and everyone who's brought this software forward to the Clipper environment and made it easier for us to do these kind of effects. Hope to see you again soon.